sell um, a couple brochures. And this isn't product specific. This is actually client facing. So um, you can show this to your client um, if you meet with them and they, you talk about long term care. You mm -hmm. have a conversation about long term care. Um, again, it's not pr uh, product specific. It just tells you facts about long term care and also the solutions that are offered out there in the industry as well as what we offer nationwide. Okay, so very, very um, generic. So good, um, good piece to have. Uh, in case you meet with your clients. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started. If there's a couple people that come in, that's that's fine. We'll just um, we'll just have them um, sit down after. But um, so those, uh, especially those on the webinar who I have not met yet, uh, my name is Jeannie Fan, and I'm the regional wholesaler for California. Um, I work with, uh, I believe it would be uh, Brian Marsh, who covers this area. So has anyone met Brian Marsh before? Yeah, you have. Know. Okay. All right, so Brian Marsh is uh, the wholesaler in the LA, part of Orange County area, including Norco. Um, and he covers this area, but I also partner with him to cover the region as well. So um, the business has grown so much over the years with WG and Transamerica that they brought me out here to help with the business. So um, it's great for me and I love the territory. So um, I met with you guys before. This time we're gonna go over long-term care specifically. Um, I know last time we discussed um, the different IUL solutions, and um, I understand that's you know your number one product that you sell in this office. Is that correct, IULs? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. So, um, any variable business, by the way, just so I know. I'm the only one with securities. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good to know. Um, so, in case anyone does get securities licensed, we also offer uh, variable solutions. So, um, you can feel free to talk to myself or Brian about that as well if you're interested. Okay. But we'll focus on long term care today. Um, and I want to make sure I have time to answer questions at the end. So, um, we'll go over the content. Um, this can be discussion based because you know, we're in a, a smaller setting. So, if you have questions, actually, just feel free to you know, chime in or uh, let me know. Um, but what we're going on over today specifically um, is an update that we have at Nationwide regarding our long-term care writer. Um, many of you know that Nationwide has two long-term care solutions, right? We have our long-term care writer, and then we have our Care Matters long-term care product. Okay, so long-term care writer and Care Matters. That's just one word, Care Matters. Now, who in this room has um, written Nationwide's long-term care writer before? Has there anyone added that to an IUL or a UL? Not yet? No. Okay. Okay. Um, so it's important for us to know because I know, I think Matt might have attached yeah, a couple. Has. Yeah. Um, so this is important for those, especially on the, the webinar as well. Um, those who have already written Nationwide's long-term care writer, so they've added a writer to an IUL or a UL, um, any of our uh, uh, permanent products, um, as well as those who are planning to um, write Nationwide's long-term care business. Um, it's The announcement that I'm going to make is retroactive and it's for those policies going forward. So it's gonna apply to any policy um, currently, in the future, and retroactively, okay? Um, the reason why I want to go over this information today is because it's important for you to know what your client is signing up for. Um, when you add a long-term care writer to a policy, whether you're working with Nationwide, Transamerica, PacLife, um, we want to be able to help you really fully understand what the long-term care writer can do for your client. Um, a lot of people add a long-term care writer and they have no idea what they have. They don't know what the writer can and cannot do. So um, that's the main purpose of our conversation today is to help you understand what this writer can do for your clients, right? So um, to give you some background, our long-term care writer currently pays out indemnity, right? Um, there's a difference between indemnity and cash indemnity. And I believe in the brochure, it talks about the differences between the two. Um, you know what, it talks about reimbursement versus cash indemnity. But if you flip to the very last page, right? talks about how benefits are paid, reimbursement versus cash indemnity. You'll see that in number two, it talks about the client being able to use 100% of their benefits for informal care 
Um, does anyone, can anyone tell me about informal care, what that looks like? Informal long-term care? So informal long-term care is when um, the caregiver, right, the caregiver for your client, so once your client goes on long-term care claim, the caregiver does not have to be licensed, okay? They don't need to have to go through certification to, get, to be a licensed caregiver. That's informal care, right? Most companies out there do not offer cash indemnity, right? Cash indemnity, again, is informal care. Most carriers, most product providers out there do not offer that. Current, it's gonna be where they just pay out and then whoever wants to kind of use that money but wants to take yeah. care of this this yeah you know, yeah line. exactly exactly so you can use the money however you want so once you go on long-term care claim you can use however the money um, the money however you want and you can use the money with whoever you want to, to care for you okay. um, so most of the time when clients mm -hmm. go on long-term care claim let's say they um, choose to receive home health care right which is when they receive care within their own home let's say they want that um, that solution, that type of um, payout. They stay within their own home, they have someone take care of them within their own home. It's usually someone who's licensed, usually a professional that comes in, a stranger, right? Usually a stranger comes in and takes care of the client. That's indemnity, right? That's indemnity, it's when a stranger comes in, um, a third party comes in and takes care of the client. Mm -hmm. Cash indemnity, which is what I just described in this brochure, cash indemnity is when your family member, your friend, someone you know, um, can take care of you within your own home. That's informal care. So there's a huge difference there between indemnity versus cash indemnity. Okay. So would so. indemnity be considered formal care then? Uh, yes, it? it would. It would. Okay. Indemnity would would require formal care. And that's a professional. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So a professional, a licensed caregiver, and we'll go over who a caregiver could be, what right. a caregiver okay. is in a second. So, so that Indemnity, you said third party comes in and takes care of them. Mm -hmm. Is yeah. that at the informal or the formal part? That's the formal. The formal mm -hmm. part, right? Yeah. Indemnity. Formal, just think formal means that a third party or a stranger is coming in. Informal is when your family, your friend, your best friend, um, your niece or nephew is taking care of you. That's informal mm -hmm. care. They don't have to be licensed. They don't have to go and get their certification. Like Elizabeth when she went off work with, um, with you know, yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, so um, I don't know if Al, you've, you, I think you mentioned you had experience with with a family, family member. Yeah, so we, uh, we like to talk about this. So I think the biggest thing is is that for the audience right now, right, for all of you, what do you think is more prevalent, formal care or informal care? Informal. informal. Hands down. Yep. Now why do, when, but when people, let's, just, let's start simple. When you talk about long-term care, I call it the guacamole statement, right? People love it or they hate it. There's usually no in between. Right? And the reason I say that is when you talk to you about long-term care, what do they say typically? I don't need it. Or mm -hmm. the opposite. I just watched my parents go through this. Mm -hmm. I need this. Mm -hmm. That's what mine would do. My grandmother just passed away in January, 99 years old. She just had her last seven months with formal care. The nine years before that, when she started, when she couldn't use her legs, and it's not just, she's just deterioration, right? She was in a wheelchair, but she couldn't use her legs, everything else is there. No formal care. My parents paid for someone informally, and then my mother helped because she was a nurse. But what people think is when they use long-term care, they're paying to use someone who's certified, who's licensed. Mm -hmm. And they're paying for it the entire time, but then guess what happens? Husband or wife helps out. Kids help out. Friend helps out. And now all of a sudden, you're not using that indemnification towards a certified professional. Now you have a family member helping, and you're not getting your money. Mm -hmm. With Nationwide, guess who you can get that money? No matter who you use. Mm -hmm. You're getting that money back. That protects everyone. And if I can stress that story enough with you, the question then becomes to someone, who do you want to use? If you need a certified person, use them. If you don't need a certified person, and you still have two ADLs you can't do, use them, use a family member. But it's your choice. And it's not the rigmarole of doing your taxes and sending in a receipt for every single time that you get something. You just get your money back. And I love telling that conversation because in my family, I've seen it numerous times. My grandmother's the best example, but I've seen it with my aunts, my uncles, and my dad's side, my mom's side. With, I mean, it's just amazing. So I like to stress that to everyone. It's your choice for that money because it doesn't have to be. 
Okay. You pull it out as you need it, or is it a certain amount that they can cut you a check for, or how does that work? Yeah. Yeah, so we'll still pay out on a monthly basis. So basically, once your client goes on claim, um, the company will typically, it starts this trigger, right? It, it triggers the long-term care benefits. So we'll consistently start paying out the monthly benefits, but if you don't need to use all your benefits, you can either store it away um, in a savings account, uh, you can leave it within Nationwide's policy so that your benefits basically get gets um, lengthened, right? So the benefits will last longer. So you have options if you don't use all of it, but we will continue to pay out your benefits once you go on claim. We are required to. All right, so what, so what qualifies someone to go on, uh, on claim? Like what? where they need to be at. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Uh, so good tie into our um blank screen. To our notes right here. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> like two hours. Oh, blank yeah, 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 activities of living. Yeah. A quick stat for all of you that I love telling is seventy percent of long term care claims are with informal care. Actually let me change that, not claims. Seventy percent of, of people who are taken care of by any type of long term care is informal. Better way of putting it. So yeah. mainly family and friends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'll answer that question really quickly of um, what qualifies you to go on claim. And then um, I do wanna make my announcement, my big announcement, um, and then go over the details of, of what's going on in Nationwide. So um, Nick had asked, you know, what qualifies you to go on claim? So first qualification is um, you either cannot perform two out of the six activities of daily living, so ADLs, right? Okay. So that's number one. You either can't, six. yeah, can't perform yeah. two out of the six activities of daily living. It mentions in case you are are interested in what those ADLs are. Okay, or you have some sort of cognitive impairment. So that's usually um, most of the time it's Alzheimer's, um, but some sort of cognitive impairment. So one of the two it doesn't have to be both, just one of the two, in order for you to qualify for claim. So cognitive impairment? Mm -hmm. Yep. Cognitive impairment. Okay. And once that happens, right, that will qualify you for claim. But what we're going to do now is once your client qualifies, you're going to need to help them by reaching out to the product provider. So it's nationwide, Transamerica, et cetera. Reach out to us. Let us know that your client is going on claim and we'll send you the paperwork to fill out. Okay. So you said a cognitive impairment would be like an Alzheimer's mm -hmm. or like yep. a Parkinson's. Parkinson's. Dementia. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Dementia. Um, dementia and Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's number one is what we usually see, and then dementia also. Um, but you know, as long as they qualify for one of the two, then they will be able to go on claim. Okay. Now, once that paperwork is filled out, so they can't perform two of the six activities of daily living. They have some sort of cognitive impairment. You get the forms from Nationwide. You fill out those forms. What happens now is Nationwide will review the forms, right? We're also going to ask for a plan of care from your licensed practitioner, okay? So a plan of care, and I'll go over the details of the plan of care in a second. But we're gonna go and request for a plan of care written by a licensed practitioner. And once we can approve of that plan of care, we'll go ahead and start paying out the benefits after 90 days. Okay, that's important to note. 90 days is what's called the elimination period. So most companies will have um, an elimina elimination period anywhere between 30 to um, some companies pay out after like a couple, four to six months. Um, ours is 90 days, so three months. So the, so the client has to endure that cost, whatever they're doing, for that first 90 days. Right, right. So um, if they need care from a third party, they would pay out of pocket for the, first thir uh, for the first 90 days. After the 90 days, their benefits are paid directly to them. Mm -hmm. And for, for the room, let's be honest about the elimination period. That's to not to prevent. It's right. It's to vet it, mm -hmm. verify it. We all knew that, but and does that have to be ninety consecutive days, or can it be ninety days total accumulated? Ninety um, ninety days consecutively. Consecutive. Okay. 
um, and it's calendar days, yeah. by the way, calendar okay. days. Not, not business days. Not, no. yeah, not business days. <laughs> but, but those are, those plans still live out there. There are there's still business days out there. Mm -hmm. Really? And business mm -hmm. days extended, obviously, by weekends. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you'd be surprised at my long-term yeah. care policies. I saw in the 90s <clears> that, you know, or little 90s, early <clears> thousands, that they were like, business days, and you're like, well, that can turn into like 200 and some days. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Some of eating that cost wow. by the time they eat it. It's amazing. And people didn't need to find print. And in some cases, they didn't know. So nationwide is consistent calendar days. So if they're willing to eat the, I mean, I say eat, they're willing to pay for the cost of what they need to get long-term care, 90 days is mm -hmm. pretty fast for some other companies. Mm -hmm. yeah. A good rule of thumb is the longer the elimination period, the lower the cost. Mm -hmm. That's a good rule of thumb, right? So 90 days, I mean, three months, significant amount of time, but what we're going we're gonna to see is the costs are going to be lowered for the client. Okay. So pay, all right, is, so you said payout, um, so obviously the higher death benefit they have, the more monthly payout, right? That's what determines the monthly payout. For? Is that a percentage of the, of the coverage amount? Yeah. Is what it, so since we're talking about the long-term care writer today, um, the answer is yes. So um, usually when we write a life insurance policy, uh, we usually have $500,000 death benefit and then 500000 in long-term care, right? So it's the same amount. So um, once you go on long-term care claim, it's basically an acceleration of that face amount of that death yeah, benefit. Absolutely. Yeah. So it just okay. slowly deducts from that. Mm -hmm. And so it is was, there a certain percentage of the of that amount that because you said it pays out monthly? Yeah. What's that yeah. number? Yeah. Like two percent. Two percent. Two percent. Two percent. Two percent per. Um, two percent of that total <laughs> benefit amount. So two percent of the five hundred thousand. Would be monthly? Would be the monthly benefit. Okay, 2% mm -hmm. monthly. Okay. And it'll last for about 50 months, the benefits, for the long-term care writer. 50 months. Okay? Okay. That's like 4.2 years, approximately? Yeah. And then if you think about it, what's the average claim for long-term care? Not two and a half. Right. So before having that conversation, don't be wrong, there's always going to be exceptions to the rule. Right? There's always five years, four years, et cetera. But mm -hmm. the majority of them are, you're correct, two and a half years, three years, so you should be coming for that time period. And most people go on claim at about late 70s, early 80s on average. Is there a minimum uh, amount of coverage to add the long-term care rider? Um, it's, it would be a minimum of 2500 for the um, long-term care benefits. So multiply that by, I guess, 12 and then multiply that by, I guess, multiply by 50 months would be, I think it's... My, I was just on vacation, so my mental math is. Seven hundred twenty-five thousand. I think it is. Those? I just wanted to be sure. Uh, one hundred twenty-five thousand. Good. Mm -hmm. So I still have my mental math here. Yeah. Congrats. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting there like, are you kidding me for this? <laughs> so minimum one hundred twenty-five thousand. So when you add the rider on, you specify how much how much you want it to be. It's not it's not the it's not necessarily the same as the coverage amount on the death benefit. Right. So some people will have one million of death benefit and then mm -hmm. five hundred thousand of long term care. Oh, so you okay. can specify. Yeah, you can do right, less okay. than the death benefit. Um, you can't do more than the death benefit. Obviously, so you yeah, can either okay. do the same or less. Yeah, but you do specify okay. how much. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So I've never done. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. I've never done done on nationwide. I just mm -hmm. you know with with trends, you just add an LTC, you just add the rider mm -hmm. on. And it just automatically mm -hmm. just goes off the mm -hmm. death benefit, mm -hmm. I guess. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't specify like breaking it up, yeah. you know, like you were saying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, most people, they match the same amount. They don't really do half and half, you know, they usually just do the same amount. So most of the time, you're going to see 500 and 500. Um, but, you know, it's it's your choice if the client is looking for less long term care than death benefit. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And what, what would trigger a client to look for less? Mm -hmm. of a death benefit, I mean, a less of a uh, long-term care rider. Mm -hmm. So um, so death benefit is for, it's for leaving a legacy, right? right. It's for paying out to beneficiaries. Mm -hmm. um, long-term care is more for the client's own use. It's for their, um, it's for their use when they go on long-term care claim. So if they think that they're not going to incur that much costs okay. when they go on long-term care claim, then they could have a lower long-term care amount. So it's just an emotional, yeah. an emotional decision. It's yeah, it's definitely an emotional decision. Um, 
it's just dependent on what they're looking for when they're on long-term care claim. So some clients want to have a private nursing home. They want the best of the best, right? Mm -hmm. They're probably going to need a lot more long-term care mm -hmm. benefits than someone who just wants to stay within their own home and incur minimal costs if possible. So it just depends on the client's preference. Okay. So is everyone ready for my big announcement? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so I mentioned before there's a difference between indemnity, which is formal care, mm -hmm. versus cash indemnity, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So Nationwide's long-term care rider, by the way, is indemnity. So it, it, formal care is required. But starting about a month ago, I'm, I'm spreading the word slowly, so starting about a month ago, Nationwide decided that we want to modernize our long-term care rider which means that from now on and retroactively for all policies that have been in force with Nationwide's long-term care writer, we're going to offer cash indemnity, which means 100% informal care is offered on every single long-term care writer, okay, 100%. So I know you all mentioned that you have not written long-term care, Nationwide's long-term care writer yet, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for those as in the audience as well, and for you know agents like Matt, um, who may have already written long-term care with Nationwide, we're going to um, have this effective retroactively as well. So we're gonna send out letters to all agents letting them know, hey, these are all the policies that currently have long-term care on it that you've written in the past. What we're gonna do is make sure the client is notified that they now have access to informal care. So their family members can go and take care of them if that's what they want. It doesn't have to be a stranger, it doesn't have to be a third party, it doesn't have to be expensive. It can be within their own home and it can be paid to family members, right? That's great. Yeah. yeah. So let me let me ask you all, what does this mean for you? What does this mean for your clients? I know these are, you, you all haven't written long-term care yet, so what does this mean for any policy that you write in the future for your clients? They have, they have options. They have options, they have flexibility, right? More options to use their benefits however they want, right? It gives them a little bit more sense of comfort, you know, more comfort. Exactly. You know, it's a lot more yeah. that peace of mind. You know? Exactly. Yeah. 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 So more comfort, more peace of mind, knowing that they can use the benefits however they want so that they don't have to worry from age 60 until age whenever they go on claim for 20 years, you know, how is my how are my benefits gonna be paid out? They have peace of mind, right? Okay, flexibility and control. Okay. I wonder if that's going to be a trendsetter for the rest of the industry. I would hope so. This was a huge decision. This was a couple years in the making. Uh, we all got okay. on conference calls week after week, and then this finally came out, and uh, we were all extremely excited. So mm -hmm. all the wholesalers have been spreading the word. Um, but if you know any agents who have already written Nationwide's long-term care writer, um, and you're, you're talking to them about, about this uh, big announcement, feel free to spread the word. Um, you know, feel free to let them know, by the way, the letter is gonna be coming out within the next couple weeks, couple months, um, to agents first, and then we'll send out letters to the clients after, so that you as agents know what's going on, right? Mm -hmm. You're in the know about what's happening at Nationwide first. Okay, okay. yeah. So any, any questions before we go over some details about the long-term care claim process? Um, besides the claim process, uh, so it's a rider, obviously you're adding to an IUL. Um, well, I guess the cost is going to be determined, you know, when you run the illustration, right? Mm -hmm. You could see yeah. like the different, mm -hmm. the price with it versus not. Right, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we can always run a sample illustration to okay. take a look. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. So, yeah. oh. Ooh. Pause on me. <clears throat> okay, so we did mention, um, you know, how do we go on claim, can't perform two out of the six activities of daily living, you have some sort of cognitive impairment, um, you submit the paperwork back to Nationwide, and we ask for a plan of care, then the 90-day elimination period starts, right? Mm -hmm. And then as soon as we fulfill the 90-day elimination period, benefits start to get paid out, right, every month, either in the form of a check, <coughs> Or we can actually direct deposit it to your client's bank account as well. So either or, okay? Does anyone, by the way, does anyone have clients um, who have expressed that they are looking for, um, looking to retire in a different country? Has anyone come across that yet? Not yet? That would be a Matt issue probably. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> I, have, I haven't personally, but yeah. I, mean, I mean, I hear about about that. Yeah, yeah they want to go back to the Philippines. And yeah, they want to go the Philippines, Mexico. Yeah, Mexico. I've heard a lot of yes. Thailand, Thailand. Vietnam. Yeah, Vietnam. Um, mm. I have some family that they're looking to do that. Let's go back to the to to Vietnam. So in case that does come up, though, um, because you know you never know what clients you may come across. So um, yeah. in case that does come up and they are looking to retire in a different country, um, Nationwide's Long Term Care Rider also pays out internationally. Okay, oh, so that's wow. awesome. International that benefits are offered. Okay, if clients go on a plane in a different country. Hmm. That is awesome. Let me see if there's some details about international claim on here. If not, I can just talk about it. Oh, right there. Okay. So international benefits. Now, we offer international benefits, but there's a couple things that we want to keep in mind when, when clients are going on claim internationally. First of all, remember that plan of care that's required to be submitted to Nationwide? So that plan of care, whether they're in Thailand, whether they're in Mexico, whatever country they're in, it has to be written in English. Okay, we have to be able, we, we're not gonna be able to, we're not gonna translate it. We have to be able to read it in, in English. Okay. Second of all, what happens, what other things can you, can you guys think about when, um, when paying out benefits, when paying out benefits in a different country? What about the currency? Bank currency. Yeah. Currency is a, a, an issue, right? So what we're going to require is that, yes, we'll pay out your monthly benefits, either in a form of a check or we'll direct deposit it to your bank account, but it has to be a U.S. bank, okay, it can't be an unknown bank to us, it has to be a U.S. bank, and it will be paid out in U.S. dollars, so we won't convert it over to the currency that you're in. Okay, so U.S. bank and U.S. dollars. Depending on the currency rate to the dollar, that could be a winner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're, I guess if you're in Europe or England and you're using the pound, that's a lot higher, right? Or in, in, in Thailand? Yeah. In Philippines. Yeah. yeah. It's 50, 50 pesos for every dollar now. Really? Yeah, that's good. I don't know how the box <laughs> doing. <laughs> How many bot was it when you were there? Oh, I, don't, I don't remember. A lot. <laughs> a lot of bot. <laughs> Last thing to consider, this is pretty important too. Last thing to consider when we're, con when we're talking about international benefits is that the plan of care, right? When the doctor writes the plan of care, it has to follow U.S. standards. What do I mean by U.S. standards? I mean that the, the doctor can't just write that you're taking some sort of foreign medication that the U.S. has no idea or no clue what is in that medication. It has to follow U.S. standards, right? Um, it has to be something that someone in the U.S. would take, any medication they would take, um, the procedures that are involved, the type of care that's being given. Uh, it has to follow U.S. standards. Okay? It's a little bit restrictive, but still, the idea that you could do it is, yeah. is pretty, that's pretty yeah. Yeah. groundbreaking, visionary. Yeah. And yeah, restrictive, possibly. It's it's more of nationwide making sure, because we are a U.S. company, mm -hmm. first of all, we're making sure that um, we follow the law, right? We follow the, the um, life insurance department, the law, long-term care department law um, for how we would pay in the U.S. So we're just going to follow the same type of standards, same type of rules for, for um, U.S. clients. Mm -hmm. So um, it's just to make sure consistency, standards are followed. Um, and that they're getting the benefits that they signed up for. And the licensed practitioner uh, mm -hmm. for the, for the um, has to be a U.S. licensed, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, U.S. licensed. Thank you. Yes, honey. Yep. Uh, licensed health practitioner must have an active license to practice in the U.S. Mm -hmm. So um, does, it, does anyone know what defines a licensed practitioner, by the way, licensed practitioner. Mm -hmm. So most people think that it, it's just a doctor. You have to be a doctor. Sure. Not necessarily. It can be an MP. All right. So licensed mm -hmm. health practitioner. It can be a physician, an MD. It could be a registered nurse. I actually didn't know that before. It can actually be a registered nurse as well. Or a licensed social worker. Okay, licensed so social worker, so those three things. 
who was licensed to practice in the U.S. and operating within the scope of their practice. Okay. Right, so not just a position. Okay. Now I do want to go over what is required in the plan of care because a lot of people are um, unsure or you know, they, they don't know what to, to include in the plan of care. They don't know what to ask for in the plan of care. The doctor should know, but if the doctor isn't aware of what to, to write in the plan of care, what to include, um, what we can do is send them a guideline as well. So the claims department, once the client goes on claim, we'll send out the paperwork. The requirements of what is necessary in the plan of care is going to be um, included as well, and you can just give that to the doctor or the registered nurse who's writing the plan of care. And by the way, um, when we send out the letters to the agents who have already written long-term care, um, the long-term care writer with Nationwide, we'll include this um, FAQ as well. Um, since all of you haven't written the long-term care writer yet, we're going over this now, uh, but I can always send you a copy as well. Um, I can send it to, to Nick and he can pass it along to everyone, if that helps. Okay. So what is necessary to be included in the plan of care? So first thing is that um, we need to know what services are being performed, right? How the client is receiving their care. So services performed, it's number one. That includes medical treatment, medical therapy, um, services, okay? So number one is the type of care and services, okay? We're also going to ask who is going to take care of the client, so is it the, it's, is it the family member? Are they using informal care or are they using a third party? And if they're using a third party, we'll ask for information of that third party. So the licensed caregiver. And by the way, although we're offering informal care, they're not required to, to use that informal care option, right? They can have a third party come in and take care of them if they choose to. Or they can be you know, in an assisted living home, in a nursing home. Um, it's not required to have a family member. Take As care a licensed of person only applies if they're using the formal care. Right, right. Mm -hmm. If they're choosing home health care and they're choosing to receive the care in their own home. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then these are just a couple other things to keep in mind. Um, it's more detailed, so. Um, you don't need to memorize all this information. Again, I can always send this to you, but just so you know, some things that we're gonna ask are the diagnosis, what's the status of the client, um, you know, what stage are they at, or how severe is the Alzheimer's, we'll ask things like that. Um, what medications are they planning to take, um, you know, things, things like that in that nature. All right, so. Long story short, plan of care, it's all case by case. It's not gonna be the same for every client, okay? So it's just like saying one client, their, their plan of care could only be, say, $6,000 a month, and then it could only be like $3,000 a month based yeah. on the plan of care. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, and I had mentioned before, and I think we talked about this last time too, even if the client is receiving, if their policy is saying it's $6,000 a month, um, we'll st still pay out that 6000 even though they only need $3,000. We'll st still pay out the 6000 They can use the money however they want, the excess. Mm -hmm. All right, and we already went formal, went over formal versus informal care. Um, this is just more information on how to receive the claim, 90 day elimination period, we went over that, okay. All right, and then just a little bit more info, I think this is the last step, um, a little more information on the elimination period. Um, I mentioned it was calendar days, right? Um, the, for formal care, there is a difference for receiving the, um, the care if you're receiving formal versus informal, um, as far as the elimination period goes. So for formal care, the elimination period starts on the first day the insured begins receiving care from the facility. 
<coughs> okay. That's formal care. Informal care starts when the plan of care starts on the date that the plan of care was signed by the licensed practitioner. Okay, so once the practitioner, the registered nurse, doctor, whoever writes the plan of care, they sign it, that's when the elimination period starts if they're receiving informal care. So if they're staying within their own home, they're receiving care from their family, it starts on the date the doctor or the registered nurse signs. Okay. And uh, one last thing, recertification. Um, we are required, um, or we all we do have the um, ability to recertify after 12 months, every 12 months. Um, so once your client goes on claim, I mentioned before it lasts for about 50 months, right? About 4.2 years. So every 12 months, Nationwide has the right to recertify and just make sure the client still qualifies for claim. So that's important to know as well, every 12 months. And how do they go about doing that? Do they contact the, their primary care physician that, or whoever you know, did the initial diagnosis and put the plan of care together? Yeah, okay. so it, an example could be um, they'll require for an updated plan of care. Um, so they'll, they'll request for the licensed practitioner who wrote the plan of care to review the claim and make sure the client is still following the medication, the services schedule, um, and if there's any changes, make the update, sign it, and send it back to Nationwide. So that could be one way of recertifying. Uh, what, what happens if that physician or certifier uh, doesn't perform it in an in a, a adequate amount of time? Will the benefits stop until it's recertified? In other words, something unforeseen happens. Uh, the physician is gone, and they can't get a hold of him or whatever. Mm -hmm. What would happen if, if he didn't get in on time? So in that case, my, and I'm not a claim specialist, but my best guess based on what I do know is that we'll ask for the client to receive a plan of care from a different licensed practitioner. Okay. Um, so if we can't get contact, I think I've, I've gotten this question before. If we can't get in contact with that licensed practitioner, we will still need to recertify and we'll just ask for it to be done with someone else. Yeah, let's be, let's be honest about this, right? So the odds of someone not already working with someone else because they're on long-term care Pretty going to be really, yeah. really, really, really slim, so mm -hmm. they probably will be. But we haven't had, I mean, we haven't seen that yet. But to the question, but I mean, they're probably working with something. Well, I know, what I'm thinking of is is that people are going to be able to use this overseas. Mm -hmm. that, that could create a whole new, you know, I don't know. I, I know we have the internet and everybody can communicate yeah. that way. But <laughs> you're right, especially overseas. Yeah, yeah but it could be right. it could be in, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, could be something that comes up. I hope not. <laughs> Shut up. So any any other questions regarding long term care claim process anything at all that we went over? Matt, I had asked uh, before anyone who's written um, <coughs> Nationwide's long term care writer. I think you have, right? I have. You have. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's a pretty uh, simple process. Yeah. I mean, just like any other carry work, you have to do the illustration. You just add it as a writer. Yeah. And then. Uh, you have to run it as CBAT because you want to make sure that the money's still going to be there, whole deal. But other than that, I mean, it's it's pretty simplified. It's nothing any more complicated than anything else yeah. that we've already we're, we're used to writing. Yeah, it's fairly minimal cost, right? Yeah, I, if I remember right, the last one I did, it only increased the target premium by like two percent. It wasn't mm -hmm. very much, mm -hmm. and we're already talking about a couple that are already in their fifties, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so it didn't add that very much to the target premium. So if I remember right, that that couple, it's between husband and wife, it's like seventy hundred dollars in premium that they're putting in, but their target premium is only like four, four or five hundred bucks mm -hmm. a month between the two of them. Because mm -hmm. I did the um, I did the uh, protector. I mm -hmm. didn't do the uh, accumulator because they're yeah. in the fifties. Yeah. Um, I mentioned to the audience before that. Um, Nationwide's big announcement, which is the main purpose of why I'm here today, um, is to let you all know that for those agents who have already written Nationwide's Long-Term Care Writer, um, going forward and retroactively, we're going to offer informal care for all policies, already in force and that are to be written. Okay, so um, I know before we had talked about how it was indemnity and uh, yeah. formal care was offered, but not informal, right? So now, Care Matters and Long-Term Care 
Nationwide's long-term care writer offers informal care. That's mm -hmm. good to know. Yeah, yeah. Very good to know. Really good to know. Yeah. So, um, does that is is this helpful to 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 know and um, to understand when when writing long-term care when having that conversation with your clients? Absolutely. Let's add a few miles. Let's take it up. Good. Yeah. I was gonna say let's take let's take a step back because you've had the conversations about insurance. You're all doing your jobs. You're fantastic at them. But when you're sitting down with a client, why are you looking to use long-term care? What are some of the things they get out of it? Well, the informal care is one of the main ones. Yeah. Giving them options. Informal care, what else? Why would they want to use long-term care? Yeah. Like, right. reduce right. costs. Right. Okay, what else? Well, it's also, too, if, you know, if it's explained in the right way, people know that their health care only covers the first 30 days. Right. Mm -hmm. After that, then it comes out of pocket unless they have something like a traditional long-term care policy or something like this where they can draw funds from to help pay for sure. You know, caregiver or certain improvements around the house, handrails, yep. changing out their bathroom, stuff like that. That's that's yep. what it's all about right there. So what else? Like, you mean it, it really e eases the burden to the family? Okay, mm -hmm. so Jeez. that's that's that right there. So why do we sell life insurance? Right, unexpected. Yep. Why do we sell long-term care? Unexpected. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. we're all expected to die. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody believes it, right? <laughs> So, you know, one of the things I ask is, as you talk about this, you know, people are going to ask what the reason for long-term care is. And if you are looking for prospects, you're looking for clients, right? The first thing I would ask you is, have you found someone who has been with it, been through it with their parents, and sees the value? And also, have you spoken to anyone whose friends have been through it and seen what they've been through? Those are your easiest conversations right off the bat. Most men who have not experienced that, actually some who even have, I, my father's friends have some of those, they don't think they need it. And in all honesty, a lot of them don't. They're, they are gonna die earlier. We know that for facts, right? We, we know what the mortality rate is. Women, though, are usually more inclined to have this conversation. Mm -hmm. So as you're prospecting, as you're having these conversations, number one, have they been through it? Number two, it is an emotional state. And you typically will do that with a woman or a spouse that's looking out for themselves or for their husband. Finally, the way I like to wrap this up is, you buy life insurance to create a legacy you buy long-term care to protect your legacy. And people usually don't realize that. I've amassed a ton of money, and it's amazing how quickly it goes because you weren't planning for the health. You weren't planning for the medical. So again, life insurance is to leave a, long, is to leave a legacy. Long-term care is to protect your legacy. And those are two totally different conversations that people tend to muddle sometimes. So as you're talking to those prospects we just talked about, what do they have planned? God forbid something happens. And most of them will say, I have money put aside. And how quickly can they pay for $12,000 a month, $8,000 a month, to pay with daily living? So, right? California is one of the highest when it comes to long-term care costs. Yeah, what is it here on average, do we know? Six to seven or something. So it's 10 like to five, last I looked for California, eight of 8,000 yeah. for the state is the for the United States is average. So if you have 10 to five a month to put away, for that's 120,000 a year, for average of two and a half years, it's fine. If you have 300,000 dollars sitting there, and you don't want to, you don't mind spending it. Go right ahead. People do that. Some people do. The majority of people don't, and they're not thinking about it. And then they don't have that money put away. So then, what do they eat into? They eat into retirement the money savings, retirement savings. They eat into the the um, the cash value of life insurance. They eat into what we just talked about equity in their home. Their home, they pull equity out, right? Next thing you know, the home's gone. So these are all the things that people just do not plan to get rid of, and I've seen it with farmers, I've seen it with lawyers, I've seen it on both sides of the equation. It's just the unexpected things that come up and take all that money and then everything they plan for falls apart. Just some thoughts for you. Yeah, that's actually a good point. Something my estate plan attorney did mention, I went to, his, I, think he, I think he talked about it here. He talks about, you know, if, if the client has a discretional income to plan for something like that where they can save an extra two to three hundred dollars Put into a you know an IUL with LTC or a standalone long-term care policy where they leverage the insurance company to pay out a benefit of a hundred grand a year. It's yeah. totally worth it, right? Yeah. yeah. So that makes total sense. And it's a common you know the hybrid the hybrid policies we're talking about long-term care and life, which is even care managed by itself, they're becoming more prevalent because it is in all honesty harder to get your money out these out of long-term care because people are living longer. More importantly, medicines living last longer in long-term care. Mm -hmm. So the hybrids are becoming the conversation. Mm -hmm. My parents have an old policy I told you about earlier. Mm -hmm. 
I look at that thing, I love what I sold him. It was the best back in 2001. But now I look at it and I told my dad, I'm like, you need to go talk to somebody about this because I don't know if this is going to give you what I want today. And he's talking to someone, supposedly, hopefully next month, and we'll see if it cancels again. But when I told it to him, it was the greatest thing in the world, right? But now, saying, that son of a gun. Right? Well, it's, it's always funny, right? So being there you know, 20 years in this industry, and my dad still goes, well, I talked to the, my friend's father, who you say, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he reads Money Magazine, and I'm like, okay, good, that's great, you know, but you know, I'm still going to be his kid. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But that's just the conversation. But now he's actually having a conversation with friends. He sees what I'm talking about. It's just something we can all get from. Mm. Question for you guys: What's what's the average claim that somebody's on claim now? Length? What? Yeah, claim length. So two and a half years mm -hmm. typically. Well, with nationwide sales. Uh, sure. So last research that I research that I made um, was about three point nine years, and it could be because people's life expectancies are increasing right nowadays. Um, so it does it could vary anywhere from two and a half years to about four years approximately. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which we were talking about earlier, just paying fifty months out should cover someone for the time frame, obviously. Okay, four years, somewhere, four years. Yep. Now, is everyone licensed to sell long-term care in this room? Yep. Okay, awesome. No, she I, has I see back a for her, She has to go back for her health license. Okay. <laughs> I just I just got the health license. Yeah, she Before did. I was so happy. She's like, I passed one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but she had it in Ohio, and it was like, all right, I'm going to be in California. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay, awesome. So everyone's licensed. That's step number one, right? Um, what about the rest of the team? Anyone, everyone else that's not here? Most people, actually, it's kind of 50-50, huh? Yeah. yeah. Some yeah. people we have just do life only right now, just yeah. to get them, get them licensed, yeah. get them paid. Yeah. Um, and then the other half, just you know, they want to just do it all at once. Okay. You know, so and some of, of our agents have gone back to just get the help one. Like I was one of those guys that went back for my yeah. 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 Like I was okay. told like two okay. years ago, okay. other license and for okay. eight, you know, I barely went back to help yeah. recently. My biggest thing is the more license that you have, the more, the better understanding you have of all the different topics in the industry and the more you can speak to your clients, right? Mm -hmm. So if you have your life uh, license, great, life insurance, you can talk about life insurance, but what happens when your client asks you, well, what about long-term care? And they bring up the topic. Hey, I'm not covered for long-term care, what about that? Um, you know, it's, it's our responsibility to have that discussion with your clients um, and, and have a deep understanding of what's offered out there, so. Um, Long-term care is essential. It's just as important as life insurance, right? Yes. Okay. It's more of a conversation to have more and more every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Actually, already thinking of somebody who needs it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get your life, or your health license, and you're you're good to go. <laughs> cool. Does anyone have any other questions before we wrap up? Is that helpful? Yeah. yeah, this was good. You know, I'd ask, like, Jeannie and I have this conversation. She had the weekly. But I have mutual funds and annuities on my team. I don't have this as much. But I would ask, you just said you had somebody you could think of. Yeah. Right? Who are you thinking of right now? If we haven't put somebody in your head for this conversation and we fail, yeah. and it's not that you know someone pops it right away, but as you're thinking about it, we find a lot of tendencies that this is a difficult conversation. I'm not going to sugarcoat this and say long term care is the easiest thing in the world. It's not. It's actually probably the hardest product to sell from my point of view because of the emotional attachments to it. Mm -hmm. But as you're thinking of the people that you're doing, write them down, reach out to them. Because we come back months later always, I'm not, and I'm not saying it's every single, no, I'm not saying it's every single time. The 90% of the offices we walk into for WFG Transamerica, we tell this story, we go back in a month and a half later and no one's talked to anyone about it. Mm -hmm. And then we're starting all over again. So while it's fresh in your mind, who are you thinking of, what are you thinking of, how are you gonna approach it? Get in front of those people, circle back with Jeannie, because I'm telling you, if we come back, it's like someone you talked to life insurance about three months ago, and you see them again, you're starting all over again, right? Mm -hmm. Time kills all deals. So how do you get this in front of someone while it's fresh in your mind to make this a part of your practice, make this a part of your business, where it's not us coming in here every quarter telling you the same story, we're not talking about it again from scratch, three months from when Jeannie comes back. So there's a challenge to all of you yeah. as part of your business. Yeah, when you come back, we should have, hey, we did this, exactly. we did that, this client, this is what we're going through. Right? She can help you with all of that. So however we can help you get to that point where this conversation isn't just the practicality of it, it's how it's, we are doing it, let's make it better. We can help you with that as much now too, or next month, whatever. And Thomas and I were talking even before we got started, we're gonna set up a virtual meeting, a one-on-one -on -one virtual meeting to talk about a case that you might be working on, right? So that's something that I'm open to doing as well, is you know the fact that I'm not always here, I'm here one week every month. Um, we can always do one-on-one -on -one virtual meetings if you're working on a case, 
hop on a call or do a group meeting together. So I'm definitely open to doing that as well. Is the underwriting cool. pretty pretty standard? <laughs> I mean, it's it's still pretty quick with the the writer as far as yeah. getting someone approved on the high UL. Yeah. So um, so standard <laughs> underwriting um, care matters is where you're going to see the the expedited process, the simplified underwriting. As far as the long-term care writer goes, it's still just standard blood and urine. Um, we'll ask for medical records, but um, nothing too extensive. Okay. Yeah. But then you throw in, especially if you're doing the hybrid, the hybrid IUO with the writer, um, we can still do the intelligent underwriting still, correct? Yeah. That helps expedite it. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So um, anyone used intelligent underwriting before besides that? <laughs> that would be a good time, huh? um, so, and this can be another topic too that we can discuss. Um, intelligent underwriting, it's our um, expedited underwriting process. It gets your client's case placed um, days, if not weeks, faster than your typical underwriting process. Okay, a lot easier. Um, some clients can get away with no medical records at all. Some some healthy clients can can get away with that. So. I have a question. So, what if a client? What if you know that they have a medical con condition, if you attach it to a life insurance policy, it's going to be pretty expensive or even, or, or even deny them. So you have a standalone policy? I mean, so if you, can you do a standalone long-term care or does it kind of go, go through the same, un the, the, same, the same underwriting as well? Care matters is basically a standalone policy. So, so you're saying, saying if it's going to be too, if, if, it's, if, you, if you already know that, the, that it's going to be an expensive life insurance mm -hmm. policy, is it a different underwriting to do just the standalone? Yeah, so great question. So by the way, um, Care Matters is a long-term care hybrid product, not standalone. It's similar to standalone, but it's not standalone. Because the big difference between the two is standalone policies is 100% long-term care. Right. Nationwide Care Matters is a long-term care hybrid product. So there's still a little bit of life insurance in it, which is why it's not standalone. Um, your question was, if you know the client's going to get a bad rating, should you send them through underwriting for Care Matters instead? No. Um, the answer is um, no, just because if they're not going to get approved for the long-term care writer, it's highly unlikely that they're going to get approved for Care Matters. Because Care Matters is going to provide you with an even higher long-term care benefit amount. Um, so we're most likely not going to approve them for Care Matters if they're not getting approved for the writer. So I guess let me, let me clarify. You said is life insurance to get long term care, correct? Right. So I mean, if you got a client that's got like medical medical problem, you know, if you try to attach to a to a life insurance policy, it's right. going to be expensive. Yep. So could you just default to a to a to a long term care policy? And right. So if someone is applying right now for an IUL by itself and they get to climb for that, mm -hmm. then they go for Care Matters. Mm -hmm. and that's that's going to be and similar, right? Similar underwriting. But not 100% the same for those two, right? Not 100% right. the same. Um, Care Matters is going to be, although it's a more simple underwriting process, Care Matters is going to give you a lot more long-term care than the writer can attached to a life insurance policy. Um, so if they're not getting approved for this, they're not going to get approved for that mm. either. Um, it's more likely that they would get approved for life insurance with long-term care than they would with for Care Matters, even though the underwriting process is quicker. Mm. So, so if they can't get approved for life insurance, chances are they can't get approved for long-term care. So if they can't get approved for, for the long-term care writer attached to the life insurance policy. Okay, so take that away for a second. Take right. the, the long-term care writer off. If I'm 67 years old and I have a problem and I apply for life insurance, I can't get it. Can I apply for Care Matters to get long-term care coverage with that little bit of life? Will I get approved for that potentially? Um, highly unlikely, mm -hmm. highly unlikely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or sure like you saying. said, chances are it's just going to be more expensive. Because you're saying they're not, maybe not even denied, but maybe just it's, it's going to be expensive TV. because they're right. older, they have a condition. Mm -hmm. Right. That's just, you know so, what, sometimes it's just, it just is what it is. Hey, you know what, you waited till you were this long mm -hmm. and you had this condition mm -hmm. and that comes with a price. Mm -hmm. so yeah. Can, 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 can the care matters mm -hmm. be at a, just like a life insurance, can it be rated? Like they say, we'll take you, but you got to pay X amount um, extra. So the answer is no. There's no rating for Care Matters. No rating. It's either yes or no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of, the, one of the biggest things they look for in Care Matters is sort of on the same page is, is, is the cognitive stuff, right? It, mm -hmm. is, it is completely, when they do the interview, mm -hmm. they're looking that you're not going to be coached because chances are right now that it's going to be Alzheimer's dementia or yeah. something cognitive to yeah. part just because 
of course, so much I hate saying it's not healthier as a whole, but just yeah. they really are seeing more improvement than that. So it's the okay. mental stuff. Yeah. That's the biggest red flag when we're looking for Care Matters right off the bat. So for example, I've heard during the phone interview process for Care Matters, they'll ask the clients um, to remember the color that they're seeing. Um, they'll tell them, okay, remember the color blue. At the very end of the interview, they'll ask, what color did I say at the very beginning of the interview? They'll have to say that answer. Make sure that they're not getting coached. So they'll do things like that to test your cognitive skills. Wow. Mm -hmm. Oh, to make sure that someone's not coaching them. No, yeah, them. someone's not coaching you, writing answers down to tell you what to say. In other words, an agent.